thank you for joining us on a th on the Thunder and Lightning show. And uh, should we call it the Rainbow Show? I don't know, yes. Brad. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If, before we get started, I want to plug, uh, represent my sports team, the Brooklyn Nets. If you're not familiar with uh, Kyrie Irving, Kyrie, you'll have to just Google. Uh, he has some good highlights if you're a basketball fan, but he's done more. Uh, he, he, he's done things bigger than basketball, we'll just say. And so uh, as uh, Cantor and his freedom. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a big basketball fan all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if I necessarily represent the Brooklyn Nets, but you know, support him, support Kyrie Irving for what he's doing. Absolutely. And, uh, so anyway, he got his millions, and and now we're we're here and uh, well, switching he got gears. His and he's doing something with them. Yeah, for sure. And we're, we're switching gears a little bit, but, you know, Brooklyn is in New York, and so is uh, Father James Martin. Father Jim, please. <laughs> so um, Brett sent me an email several weeks ago, well, just a few weeks ago. And uh, Would you like to tell the story, Brett? Sure. Would you just like to start? And I, I won't steal any of your thunder, per se. <laughs> per se. Well, you've got all the thunder. I can't. Okay, so here I am in the morning, minding my own business, reading the local, my local paper. And there's a little tiny, little tiny article that says, uh, there will be an LGBTQ plus um, Zoom meeting featuring Father James Martin in my hometown. I'm like, wow, that's really something. And it said, if you want to join in the Zoom meeting, just, you know, email us at this at this address and and you you too can join the Zoom meeting. And I thought about it and I thought, sure, I want to be part of this. I do. So I signed up um, and I got to sit in on an hour long Zoom meeting with Father Jim Martin. And I call him that because that's what he calls himself. He's Father Jim, just Father Jim. You know, no James. I mean, he puts that all in his books. He puts that in all his materials. Everything that America Magazine says, Father James. Everyone refers to him in the press as Father James. But if you talk to him, he says Father Jim. So Father Jim, he is. I I don't. You know, I don't have anything. Says so. That's. You know, if he called himself Joe, I'd call him Joe. You know, that's. That, I mean, well, I, I I call him you know father as much as um, you know as much as I call any Jesuit father. You know? Well, and at, at least he doesn't call himself Jim, just Jim. You know, priests are the people. I'm no different than anyone else. You know. Well, <laughs> I have a personal relationship to a just Jim. And my wife and I call him Just Jim because he was Father Jim until he was laicized for very for a very worthy cause for a very good reason he was laicized not unrelated to tonight's subject as a matter of fact uh, so we just it, it was the priest that married us and now we just we used to call him Father Jim now we call him just Just Jim. So, uh, but uh, yeah, old uh, down home uh, James Martin is Jim, Father Jim. Please just call him Father Jim. Oh. So, so there I was. So this, um, this event was sponsored. There are two parishes in the county that I live in. I live in Maryland, in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. And um, there are two parishes in that county. And this is the more... Um, western of the two um so anyone wants to get into all the information can certainly figure this out um i'm just trying to keep it you know i'm not trying to get personal about it i'm just trying to say because let me tell you something this is coming your way if it isn't already there and it might be there and you might not even know about it and that's kind of what this is about so this was there is a local state college. I mean, there's a local, yeah, local state college in our area, and uh, they have a camp. They have a Catholic campus ministry there, and it's run by a woman, uh, unconsecrated woman, just 
a woman. And um, this was her idea. It's lock, stock, and barrel. She's the one that looked up Father James, found out he would do a Zoom meeting, and looked him up. And, of course, he agreed. So, and, the, and you know, and she put it in the paper. It's sponsored by the college. It's sponsored by the parish because she is a member of that parish. And uh, although the priest of the parish did not show up for the meeting, but it was advertised in his bulletin. Hmm. Now, and this priest, and I do not know this for a fact, but I will confirm this soon. Apparently, uh, Thursday is his big day. Thursday is his big pink shirt appreciation day. Just saying. Um, but like I say, I can't confirm that. But I, if it ever comes up again, I will make sure that I do confirm it. But, um, but he didn't show up for this meeting. But who did show up? Um, there was another priest there. Father Joseph Muth. Father Joseph Muth is famous in the Archdiocese of Baltimore for being LMNOP extremely friendly. As a matter mm. of fact, he was so friendly that the Archbishop, Lori, and, and uh, Father Muth is over the age of 75, and he still carried on at his parish, and uh, Archbishop Lori insisted that he retire and he has but he did show up at this zoom meeting and okay so i found out a few things first of all i found out that there is an actual cell of people who are working very hard to subvert the catholic church and very specifically they're in my neck of the woods um they're working hard to, as a matter of fact, the title of this talk was how to be an L, yeah, Father Joseph Muth, exactly right, yes. Um, the title of the um, talk was how to be an LGBTQI plus ally, how to be an ally. Um, what I really found it to be is, well, <laughs> I found it to be something a little, a little different from that. Um, so we logged in, there were about, I don't know exactly how many, but I'd say not more than 10. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there were about 10 of us there. Ministry, the, um, the head of the coral, the head of, um, he was the choral director at, uh, at the local university, and he's doing a real LGBT, you know, LMNOP friendly thing. He's doing a performance of Considering Matthew Shepard, and we all know who Shepard is. If you don't know who Matthew Shepard is, uh, good on you. Um, but he is, uh, he is uh, sort of a secular saint to the uh, LMNOP movement. And so they wrote a whole opera about him, apparently, or a choral work about him. And the, the, choral, the choral master said, you know, it's all, you know, the real lesson comes with the key change. That's a very choral thing to say. <laughs> you know? But they came. Um, so on to the, on to the um, so they're in my, they're in my, the parish right up the road from me. Well, what, one question here. Sorry. Sure. Uh, no, no, go ahead. No, please. So, so you said there were about what, like 10 people? Yes, that I could tell. And were there very were there very many, if any, college students? Not a one. It was mostly old. It was mostly women about the age of sixty plus. Uh, the only gentlemen there were Father Muth, who's seventy five in a day, um, the choral director, who um, is probably my age, me. Uh, there was another gentleman my age. Um, and uh, yeah, so there there wasn't anyone there under the age of fifty five, not one. Um, now let me just say that I, um, unlike here, I had nothing to say. I actually just listened to the whole thing. I didn't even turn my camera on. I had the option to not turn my camera on, so I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't because I was 
because I was making faces the whole time <laughs> because it really creeped me out. And I didn't, you know, and I wasn't there. I wasn't there specific. Unlike most times, I wasn't there to offend people. Um, <laughs> you know, I really yep. wanted to, you know, it, it's been Lent, you know, it's Easter now, but it's been Lent and I've been trying to, you know, I won't so, say so, get better, but I'm trying to, I'm trying not to be quite as, quite as much myself as I used to be. <laughs> so you were being, you were being synodal. And yeah, you were listening. thank you. Thank you. I was being synodal. Exactly correct. Yeah. You, you were listening to the surprises of the spirit. Not oh, I was at that. Yes, I was definitely listening to the surprises of the spirit. Um, okay, so so we all went around. Uh, but the main thing is Father James introduced, or Father Jim, excuse me, introduced himself. Um, and he talked about all the things he has done you know, he talked about how he became a priest, how he became a Jesuit and where he worked and, you know, with the Jesuits, he worked with prisoners, he worked with the homeless in Chicago and he did this and he did that. And I got the distinct impression that that was all a waiting and a preparation for writing Building a Bridge. Because he said when he wrote Building a Bridge and he started to do a little promotion for it, he was overwhelmed with the support that he got. Overwhelmed and excited. And he, and this is a guy who's written for movies. He was the consultant on uh, the movie Silence. I don't know if you remember the movie Silence. It was about, uh, it was about Jesuit apostatizing, of course. So, so hmm. he was a good expert on that. But he was the, he was their, he was their expert, you know, their, Catholic expert for that movie. So, you know, he likes to, you know, he likes to play with the big boys, but he said he never played with the big boys till he started this. And then he talked about, you know, how everything went up, 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 and he was, you know, up, 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 and he got to meet with the Pope. You know, it was like, that was a big moment for him. And it would be a big moment for anybody, except it's Francis. But, um, but um, yeah, so he, so he, he, he's catching, he caught a rocket. And that's really the impression I got that he caught a rocket. And I was like, wow, Father Jim's a real climber. He's a really, really ambitious man. I didn't think that about, I mean, I didn't think one way or the other about that issue, but it became very obvious that he's a very ambitious man. Keep an eye on him. He's not going away. He has the support of a lot, you know, as, as we have become aware in general, the LMNOP is a really politically powerful force that has a lot, a lot of money behind it. And I think that's what he found. What did I, there I am. It, 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 it's a politically powerful force with a lot of money behind it. Um, and well, he's got the, and he's got the, in, you know, and he's got his, and before him, I don't think they felt like, you know, even though with New Ways Ministry and then there's a couple other fake apostolates that, you know, have been condemned by the Vatican, but they weren't making any progress until he came along and now they're making progress. And that's, and this, and this Zoom meeting we were in was part of that progress because he didn't have to come to Podunk, Maryland, which is where I live in Podunk, Maryland, um, to rally 10 people. He's got Zoom for that now, but he gave an hour presentation and more to the point, there will be follow up from the campus ministry. And of course, there'll be a book study of guess what book, John? Building a Bridge. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Hmm. So the presentation itself was um, was, you know, entitled How to Be an Ally of the LMNOP. But it was specifically about three stories you can tell, three gospel stories you can tell to, to keep those squares in their place and all those straights and all those trads in their place. Um, you probably didn't know this, John, but um, the three stories are the centurion healing his servant, you know, going to Jesus and healing his servant, even though his servant wasn't there, the story of the faith of the centurion. Um, Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus um, 
having dinner with Zacchaeus. Those are the three stories that he picked. Um, and they're all about the outsider, John. And what's more outsider, what's more on the peripheries than the LMNOP and the Catholic Church? Nothing, of course. Nothing. 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 And Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess I, I guess I kind of have to agree with that. That's the whole point, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point. It's the thin edge of the wedge. Well, I will quote to you scripture the same way that, uh, that Jesus did. The devil can quote scripture to his purpose. And that's literally what's happening here because he's built a little cell of people who are going to work very hard to make sure that, and let me put it this way, not that they're accepted. He's going to, they're making sure that you and I can't even talk about these people because we're mean and hateful. And that's what, and that's the real message. We're being, they're trying to drive us out of our own church and they're trying to drive, you know, they're trying to drive any holiness or Christianity out of the Catholic church. That's what this is. And Okay, so there is a church in Hagerstown. There are two. There are several churches in Hagerstown. There's three, I believe. Uh, one of them is a Latin Mass parish, and a very good place. And one of them is not. And one of them is very LMNOP friendly. And the woman who was from there, she said uh, she was very excited because they had a Catholic book study. And they advertised seven books. How many books did they go through, John? Uh, one. Eight. They went through eight books. Seven of them were advertised. What was the eighth book, John? Building a Bridge. Yes, that's the one that was unadvertised. Nothing like lies from uh, nothing like lies from your fellow Catholics. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> they thought they wouldn't be cool, you know. They so they're these people are sneaky. These people are sneaky. Um, you know, nobody, it was in the paper, it was on Zoom, but I'd guarantee you, if you talk to 50 Catholics, not one, not one of them around here knows that this is going on. And I would say to anyone who's listening, it's probably going on where you are too. Um, I would use, I would use um, new ways. They have that wonderful list of LMNOP friendly parishes, that's where you, that's where it's coming from. Um, and you know, and and this whole experience of John Son of Thunder has been how worthless the bishops have been on this issue. They just have. Um, there are good individual bishops. There are in, there are individual bishops who are good, on, but the reality is, on the whole they're down with it. They are down with it. And why is that? Because Pope Francis is down with it. And I, or let me just say, Pope Francis, my personal opinion, which is not, uh, which is not um, canonically binding on anyone. Um, <laughs> fortunately, for, fortunately for me, you in the Catholic Church, um, <laughs> because uh, I, you know, whatever, but um so, but yeah. but there's no question that uh, he is the gay friendly pope, um, and he even likes some of the gay friendly habits like coprophilia. Do you remember that he said that again this week? Yeah, I just kind of conveniently ignored it, ignored it and know. didn't talk it's, about it because it's it, disgusting. It, it is disgusting, and if you talk about every bad thing. Pope Francis said, and every bad thing that he allowed to go on in the church and all the bad things, that's, you know, it's impossible. It's, it's too much. There's, it's just, it's just an avalanche of heresy and sacrilege and nonsense. And, yeah, uh, some, and sometimes it's, you, it's, need to you need to shake your head and yeah, exactly. it, it, move it, on. It, I mean. <laughs> well, you kind of have to move on and, you know, it's driving us, it's driving us internally, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, well, you know, it's been, it's, you know, coming on nine years now of this, 
you know, it started immediately. It started immediately on Holy Thursday um, when he started washing women's feet against canon law. But then he said, eh, but it's me, so I can break the law whenever I want because I'm the law. And that was our little introduction. And of course, we did have his first mass where he didn't genuflect to the blessed Jesus in the blessed sacrament. And, you know, he's I have found some pictures where he actually has done that once or twice. But as a general rule, he does not. Um, but um, but let me just say just real quickly that um, it's, you know, James Martin, Father Jim, not to be trusted. He is work actively working to subvert the Catholic Church with the support of Francis, um, Jorge, Jorge Bergoglio. It, that's, that is, that's the reality of it. That's the nastiness of it. Um, you know, and it's coming to my, it's coming to my area. It's coming, it's wherever you are, it's coming to your area too, because this fish is rotting from the head. Um, the church is going to get, a, and you know, driving us out is just as good as, you know, turning us, you know, they, they want, they want, they want the buildings, they want the robes, they want, even though they don't wear the good stuff. Um, they want it for themselves. They want to. They want to wear the church like a skin suit, um, you know, and drive all the people who are actually faithful to the church out of it. This is the wedge issue. This is, you know, as horrific as the persecution of of the uh, traditional right is. And both of us are very much in agreement that that's a terrible, 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 terrible thing. It's not as bad as this. This is it. This is this is this is the showdown. If he can, this breaks the church. Um, it becomes something other than Christ Church on Earth, and we and you know, that's it. Um, because you know you can't you can, you can bend only so far before you break, and that's that's it. And you know how many members of the hierarchy they're either totally they're either practicing it they're down with it or they're too afraid to say something about it and that's everybody i mean we all know even father great guy is too afraid and, and i don't and i don't blame father great guy for being afraid he's got every reason to be afraid because he's going to get canceled because they're they have the whip hand they're in control right now and as long as we do nothing this 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 will you know everyone says oh you gotta pray and you do have to pray oh you certainly have to pray but god expects we're catholics god expects us to do something you know we have to accept his grace we we have to it, it's an act it's not just so oh, how you know it happens he actually have to act you know um or as, as joan of arc said um act and the lord will act with you yep there's a there's a lightning bolt on my hat for a reason absolutely and uh you know if i'm all talk then what good am i you know? playing symbol yes um it's not easy i mean i i'm talking about in my own personal life there's you know there's challenges and issues um but uh and that's what the devil's counting on but um but it you know remember remember when the pope was passing away remember when the pope was going on to his great reward yeah reported by rorate chaley right ah, reported by us reported by we all said oh yeah i, 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 I based Christmas. it yeah. yeah, I based my report off of Rorate Chaley and right. man, was I wrong. Yeah, we're <laughs> all wrong. We're all wrong. Uh, it is, um, well, you know, you know, John, we did talk about, you know, maybe we should do a fake news, um, mea culpa, <laughs> during Lent. Uh, we didn't do it, but uh, but I will, you know, mea culpa. Um, we have spread things that are simply not true um, because we thought, they might be true, or we hope that they might be true, and they're not true at all. Like 
the Pope is, oh, he's he's got the cancer. He's going to, they've taken out his coal and he's, you know, no. He's he's fine. He's planning a trip to Canada. He's going to Africa. He's going, he's been to Malta. He's he's going to do this. He's got the good drugs now. He's got the Ruth Bader yeah. Ginsburg drugs. He's got the Joe Biden drugs. He is good to go for as long as his handlers at the uh, World Economic Federation want him to go. Well, okay, so I want to um, circle back to Archbishop Lori. Sure. And I know you're not a fan. No. You said he removed this priest. And that's more than most bishops have done. This, okay. This, okay. He removed right. this radical LMNOP priest. You're right. Cardinal Dolan. Mm -hmm. Father James Martin is in Cardinal Dolan's archdiocese. Sure Cardinal, But not only that, Cardinal Dolan has a priest who has publicly said he is LMNOP. Great. Not Father James Martin, it's Father Brian Massingale. Oh, right. Yes, Massingale's up there in Fordham, yeah. He yeah. said he's LMNOP. Yeah. And so, that, I mean, that's great, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and he's promoting, you know, this this Massingale is promoting the same things as Father G Jim, Father Jim. Father Jim. But yeah. uh, he's not as popular. Father Jim has 300,000 followers on Twitter. Exactly. And... Um, very few of them, I would imagine, are Catholic. And no, they... I, I, I see. I disagree with you. I think, well, it, they uh, are members. They are members of the church. Yes. Yes. Uh, they are baptized Catholics. Yes. Are they practicing Catholics? Well, we would say no. <laughs> we would they're say practicing, they're practicing heresy. Yes, they're practicing but... heretics. They're practicing uh, anti-Catholics. Yes. Now there are some people who follow him to see what. Uh, people like uh, maybe maybe Matt Gaspers or someone would follow him just to see what's going on. And monitor That's the what I did. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but but anyway, I, I wanted to point that out and say, hey, you know. Okay, you're right. You're very, right. very few bishops will, at this point especially, because you, you look at the rhetoric mm -hmm. and how it's. What would I? What would you say? Like maybe three years ago. Yeah. Bishop, the priests couldn't say they support LMNOP. They could they could sidestep it like Father Jim. Right. And now and they could say, well, right. we have to accompany, you know. Mm -hmm. But now they're saying change the catechism. Women priests. Yeah. And Cardinals. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is this is. Well, you know, it, the beautiful thing about uh, the, the world, the, the WEF church um, is that uh, they are always are moving forward on every front much like the russians against the ukrainians they everybody moves forward all at the same time all on, on all fronts that's how you that's how you confront the enemy and that's what they're doing to us we're the, their enemy we are their enemy even though we're fellow catholics we're their enemy and they are and you know how many times we see, you know, oh, that's a terrible story. No, 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 that's a terrible story. No, that's a terrible story. I mean, it's it sometimes all in the same day. It, they'll have us like looking at uh, fake ordination over here or fake baptism over here. And then they'll talk about LMNOP over here or getting rid of the Latin mass over there. It's it's constant. It's a constant beat down. I mean, my, my EVTN news mm -hmm. is basically the LMNOP report at this point. It is. It's it, it, yeah, they're <laughs> well, anyway. They're um, attention, and that's literally it's just it's going it's going hammer to the pedal to the metal, hammer to the wall. They're they're going for it. Um, the uh, the somewhat poor health and impending doom of uh, of Bergoglio. You know, they're it's I don't know. Do they have this? It's much like the question of the. Um, of the election in 2022, the midterm, do the do the bad people have it in hand already, and they can do what they want, or is there a real chance that things can be changed, like in the Catholic Church, that we can get a new pope who is not Francis II? That will be an exciting moment when he comes out on the balcony, and he says, and will and if he says Francis II, we know we're doomed. I mean, we're doomed to years of you know. You know, we're we're done in a, in a lot of ways, um, and we'll be eventually. You know, well, you know, we'll be, be the SSPX. I mean, yeah, we'll be banished to the SSPX. Yes, that's, for a while. That well, yeah, to, that's like you know the uh, the nuns in Fairfield. You know, they they 
they're going to have to build a big wall and a big gate and nail the sucker shut and throw <laughs> and anybody who wants to jump out and be part of uh, you know the wef church you know is welcome to leave and they will there will be people leaving that that oh. wants, it's sad but walls are not christian yeah. <laughs> yeah. i got your wall need to build though. a wall a great big beautiful wall with a nice big door in the middle so people can come through legally anyway um i want to i wanted to talk about their strategy a little bit sure so you mentioned that they're driving us out uh yes. that, that's their, that's one of their strategies is to drive us out but what's interesting though is who who are they they're not bringing anyone in they don't care because they, they because, they're the, you got to remember, we're, we're finding all sorts of new things about these people. They are depopulationist. They think there are too many humans on the earth. And we had to, you know, we've had the last two years to uh, do that. And now we're flirting with World War Three. And if that includes nuclear weapons, guess what gets guess what gets vaporized? Millions and millions of people. And we're gonna we're gonna clear out this planet good. Get down to that golden billion that they like so much. And um, let's face it, they they hate the Catholic Church anyway. And if it dies, all to the good. There's you know there's always plenty of stuff for the the tiny people at the, the three people at the top. You can always there's always enough for them and that's that's what they're counting on so they don't yeah they don't care yeah they literally don't care if everyone leaves they 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 don't they don't want they want you gotta remember just like um yesterday i think it was yesterday or today it was yesterday uh the diocese of uh, camden new jersey got eviscerated to the tune of 85 million dollars so they're going to come up to people who are, you know, going to mass their whole lives at St. Whatever, you know, you know, Our Lady of uh, Our Lady of uh, Perpetual Continence or whatever, you know, and they're going to come up and say, oh, we're going to close your parish. We have to, you know, there's not enough people here. We can't afford it. Sorry. And, you know, and there'll be another place. There'll be fewer masses, fewer graces. Um, this is, you know, more people, they, this is, you know, this is diabolical. This is and diabolical. They're going to have Meanwhile, a pastor. Oh, they'll, they'll have a pastor there who supports LMNOP. Exactly. And so you either go there or you go to the Latin mass, the SSPX. Right. They, they, They're schismatic. You can't go, right? <laughs> so, they, so they tell you. So they tell you. Yes, because and they will tell you that whether it's true or not, because they they want to they want to discourage you from the practice of the Catholic faith. And this and this is weird because this is, you know, these are the priests and the bishops and the pope and the cardinals. They they not only do they not have the faith and, and that, you know, when I say this, of course, you know, they want they want to say you know they want they want to pretend that they're the majority they are the minority but it's a considerable minority as we know and they make they make a lot of noise and it's it's you know they you know they want to they want to dishearten us you know they want to they want to scandalize us i think I, okay and they want to scandalize us they it's it's what they're about it's what they do um this you know it's hard to deal with and i don't know and you we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see what now happens. now can you give us particular details on their uh, like their strategy like may, maybe specific strategic initiatives not necessarily like doesn't have to be like pointed to your local community but like there were only 10 people on on the, on the zoom call right and so did they say like, you know, some of these grassroots organizing activities or just like sneaking stuff into the church? That shouldn't okay, be there? okay, this, what this was, well, first of all, they, they put a notice in the paper and said it was from the Catholic church. And then they see who showed up, 10 people showed up. So those people are hardcore. Those people were reached out to afterwards with an invitation to the book club studying building a bridge 
and these so and they and they can they can network and support each other they can reach out to father J joseph they can reach out to father jim uh so and those those priests are saying oh you're doing the right thing as a matter of fact the one woman was uh, was praised because she has two gay children and six grandchildren all unbaptized and they said that's a great thing but can, can you repeat what you said six grandchildren unbaptized and they said and you're still here that's great what a great faith you have it's like and she's doing her best i want to spread the word and you know be an ally because you know of my abhorrible children and this is where they get you see this is this is where the devil this is where the devil gets you because it comes at you through your children your family um and Jesus warned us from the beginning. There'll be there'll be there'll be three people there, and two of them will be against you. You know, your your mother will be against the father, and the son will be against the father, and the father will be against the, you know they you know there'll be division. Yeah. Well, but there's not because how, there's not necessarily because how often do you hear the story of like that where people are like good Catholics and their kids says, hey, you know, I'm. Their son says, hey, I have a boyfriend or something. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, what do I do? Well, he's really good, and now I'm going to support him because, yes, you know. Yes, that's, that's, yes, I see. And, and now you've flipped. You haven't just flipped the son. You flipped the parents. Yeah, well, and you see, there's, there's no logic to it. It's just emotion-based. Of course it's emotion-based. Yes. If you look at the Bible, what did someone, what did someone say here? I think someone in the comments said something about the Bible. Oh, St. Paul. Yeah, so this is Romans, first chapter. I don't, I don't have it right offhand, but read chapter. Or, sorry, I didn't leave that up. Romans 1, Romans chapter 1, at the end, it talks about LMNOP relations and said uh, they, the people that practice that, along with other sins, are deserving of death. And those who support that activity are deserving of death. So it's not just the people that practice. It's the people now deserving of death. That probably means eternal death. And okay, here we go. This is the other thing that Father James, that Father Jim, talked about. Um, he talked about well, people come up to you and quote Leviticus to you. Well, let me tell you about Leviticus. Is it is it a sin to plant two different crops in a field? Is it the sin to wear? two different fibers in the same suit because that's what it says in leviticus so if you believe leviticus you have to believe the whole thing and if you don't you're a bad catholic see they like the the and they say usury is banned and yet you have a credit card therefore you are you you're being a hypocrite that's that they are that's part of the training that he gave well and that's a that's an atheist argument against the Catholic it faith. It is, and thank you. Yes, it is an atheist argument. He was <laughs> he was he was using atheist arguments, but only against the Book of Leviticus because no one cares apparently, um, you know. And he didn't talk about Jesus fulfilling the law. Of course not, because you know. <laughs> hey, Father Jim, I wonder if you've ever been in a church named after Saint Paul. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he has. I'm oh, sure maybe he was. Saint Paul was too rigid. We yeah. need to focus on the modern saints of the last 20 years. Right, um, yeah, post-83, yeah. Oh, what's this? I also have an Ultimate Six Catechism, Catholic Catechisms Anthology. Um, uh, that, is that... Stone? What, what was the question? Is that written in stone? No. Aha! Aha! <laughs> no, the but... Cardinal of the Church! <laughs> it does have the Douay Catechism in it. And I, 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 um, you know, flip through to the the section where it says the sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance. Yeah. Uh, there are four of them. Mm -hmm. First is murder. The second is the sin of Sodom, or carnal sin against nature. Yes. And of course, the third is oppressing the poor, and the fourth is what uh, defrauding working men of their wages. Wages. One of the four, one of the four sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance is sodomy. That, that was then, John. We're we're moving on. We're moving on. We know better now because, you know, that, that, you know, our understanding broadens and deepens and, you know, 
It's just not true anymore. It, <laughs> I was guess true. So. it was true yesterday. It was true for those people, but it's not true for us anymore. Don't you understand? Please get with the program. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, and I would say, you know, if, if Father Jim comes to your neck of the woods, I mean, he doesn't have now, to. He's already got his people working. <laughs> well, if you have anyone like that that comes to your neck of the woods to talk about this, I say you challenge them with to do a catechism and ask them if they uh, accept the Catholic doctrine, you know, confer it that way, as, uh, and, and, and try to challenge them that way to try to corner them at least in front of other people. Yes. Because then you can, you know, you have a logical argument, and they say, well, that doesn't matter, that's irrelevant. They have no argument. That's their opinion. Well, they say you're mean. You're yeah. mean. You're cruel. Uh, you're... St. Jerome was mean. Yes, famously so. Yes, it, it, I, I, I do like St. Jerome because St. Jerome had a nasty, nasty temper. Well, and you look <laughs> he at someone did, like he, did. He, he struggled with it. He was happiest well, living in a cave by himself. <laughs> well, St. St. Paul was mean too, oh, yeah. right? Because what did he write about the element of peace? Yeah, yeah. What did he write so about are you with St. Paul and St. Jerome? I'd rather be with them. Than the, than, the, than the Church of we, Nice, right? We, we should we should be we should be so blessed. Um, we should be so blessed to have those people among us, um, you know. But but we can pray to them, and that's the important thing. Um, yeah, I. So yeah, it was. Um, oh, you know, he uh, when he was talking about the book of the if we didn't accept, oh, yeah. Good. Oh, good. Yeah. See, there you go. There's another one. Um, then we'll get to these comments. Oh, please, let's get to the comments. I mean, well, what were you saying about when he was talking about the book of Leviticus? He used a specific example. It was a letter written to, do you remember Dr. Laura Schlesinger? No, I th recognize okay, the name. But... Okay, Dr. Laura was a was a was a radio talk show host and she had people call in and she did you know psychiatric you know she did you know psychiatric advice and you know she was a practicing jew at the time and so this guy wrote a really nasty letter about leviticus to her basically making fun of her religion because you know it was the whole thing about you know planting two crops in the same field having fibers that touch um you know dear dr laura you know my neighbor blasphemed against uh, the name of the name of the most, you know, the Holy One. Um, I was wondering, when is the best time to stone him? Um, you know, it was, you know, that in that in that vein. And it was, you know, and he, he gave us the uh, the link, you know, so that we could look it up and we could practice those arguments, too. And of course, building bridges full of the arguments of, you know, how to twist the gospel to uh, except you know what's totally unacceptable and against god and nature um oh, by the way you and john you do know that uh you know the people that run this channel are really against this and uh you you might get dinged on this one well i'm, I'm trying I mean, to be as cool as i can but you know you know what i'll, I'll be i'll be really disappointed to lose that ten dollars a month I don't know what I'm going to have to do, beg by the street for a few hours or something. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm trying to keep it cool. I'm, you know, like I say, this is the new improved. This is the new improved temperature, temper uh, here. This well, I just passed 2,000 subscribers. So wouldn't, that be wouldn't that be a celebration, right? Knock me out after, right after I hit the big mark. I, you know, I mean, I got my 15 seconds of fame. Who can't? But. <laughs> really, when it comes down to it, <laughs> if I if I just have to do my journey home to the Latin Mass and that's the only thing I do, whatever. Oh, so be great. It. That'd be great. All right, let's get to the comments here. Sure, that's... So she was saying, uh, let's oh. see, she, living purgatory. Sorry, I caught the church altering the scriptures of the day. They removed the scripture where Paul. Okay. Said, get out. MNOP. Get out. Priest of the church was telling us if we didn't accept them, we'd go to hell. And Archbishop Neinstadt, who started shutting it down, I believe was framed and thrown out. Well, that's an interesting story. I don't know. Vigano, I think, uh, I think Vigano was friends with Neinstadt or something like that. So I don't know. I, I really don't know. 
Uh, the neighbor, and then the, here's the final thing: the neighboring church won best float. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Richard has a slightly more optimistic uh, view. Pray the rosary every day, and read your Bible. There you go. Well, you That's the best that. thing you can do. Um, well, once again, yes, it is. But we have to, and it, this is this is not easy because we will suffer for it we will be we will there will be negative consequences to it but when we are called when there's specific times and places especially in our own families we have to you know we have to stand up for jesus we have to stand up for the the faith we're not going to get friends that way we're going to lose some people we thought were our friends um it's 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 coming it's um you know and it it's it's going to take it, it praying is great and we're going to have to continue to do that we'll have to pray to, for the patience and the fortitude but we're going to have to we're going to have to do it because uh, as many christians of all stripes have said you know we're not i think but even even old uh, heretic mother Teresa said you know we're called not to succeed, but to be faithful. Did I call Mother Teresa heretic? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Okay. Um, <laughs> that'll that'll be for a different show, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am Excellent. I am planning on talking about uh, Low Sunday. Um, oh, are you going to talk about Low Sunday? You're going to talk about Divine Mercy Sunday? You're going to talk about uh, Sunday in White? Or are you going to talk about Quasimodo Sunday? Pick Is it the, aren't those all the same thing? They are. They are. <laughs> I'm they not are sure why we have four different things going on, but we do. No, and I, you know, I don't have, I, I don't, I don't know that I really have strong opinions on that, but you know, a lot of people do. So, see what I, see what other people have to say. Uh, Sarah, thanks for joining us. She says, uh, "Take heart, the wheel will turn." The other three of these sins are worth thinking about as well. If you think about the evil these four sins have wrought. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, definitely the four sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance, certainly. Um, the one, you know, the LMNOP sin stands out, though, because it's well, the, one the one that's being pushed so celebrated. hard. Celebrated. Yes, celebrated. Because because I, I don't know you you have the Occupy Wall Street like they hate the big corporate guys. Um, That's still a thing. I I'm sure there's people that still believe in that. Well, I'm sure there are. But... Yeah, I mean it's not like the Wall Street people are honest. <laughs> well, you know we live in, 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 and you know you talked about even three years ago the difference in the Catholic church from even three years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a horrible and sudden fall for basically everything in this country. Um, a lot, there are a lot of things that we, a lot of institutions and people that we trusted that simply are not trustworthy, that do not have, and they have only our, they don't have our best interests at heart. They want us to die. Um, <laughs> so, I will say on a personal level, I don't mean to get into politics, but uh, I, I kind of I'm just going to throw this out here. Mm -hmm. um, I was a registered libertarian. Right. I was a fan of Ron Paul, and I recently changed and I said, which party is pro-life and against LMNOP marriage? Well, not the Republicans. Right. Certainly not the Democrats and not nope. the Libertarians either. Nope. They're the That's only right. one of the few parties I could find is the Constitution Party. Someone needs to come up with a Catholic monarchist party. And we'll all join it. You know Someone what? do it. You're not the only. You're not the first person who said that. There, there are. There's. A, of course, then you get into the whole integralist uh, movement, which uh, I can't. Hey. I can't even. It's a goofy word. It's a goofy concept. Basically, is my understanding, is that it's a Catholic first policy. It's a Catholic first policy. You know, we should go back to. A confessional state, which is not something we've ever had in America. America's never been a confessional state. It was always well, a, it was always a, an an enlightenment state, you know, with uh, with religion, you know, carefully walled off and to the side. That's always well, how it's been. I have seen 
um, Catholics talk about the American Solidarity Party, which is like something that kind of sprung up. It was new in the past five to ten years, mm -hmm. and people are still kind of behind it. And they said, oh, it follows Catholic social teaching. Well, you know uh, what else they follow? Bernadine Seamless Garment. Well, and it, I it, it, you I, lost me at Catholic social teaching. <laughs> yeah, and and so it's like, well, let's let's yeah, have paid maternity leave. Uh, I don't think uh, they should even be working, but that's another topic. Yeah, let's see, and, but, and integrals, integrals would say, no, they, they should, when women shouldn't, that shouldn't be the first place that women go is the marketplace. They should, the first place they should go is the home if they've made a home. I mean, you know, yeah. there's... Yeah, so there's it's problematic, but then once I saw they 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 built, actually blatantly supported like seamless garment, yeah. um, you know oh well we're, well, we're pro life because we support the rights of workers or something I'm like that's is seam is the seamless garment a heresy I mean it's as good as one right well it's never been proclaimed because we don't you know we don't do that anymore um, oh you know, yeah there are no anathemas there are no um, anyway only there are no heretics yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Patty, thanks for joining us, Patty, and happy hey. Easter over there in Ireland, Northern Ireland. Our Lord picked 12, and 11 of them turned out to be rigid. Francis is a lot more careful. There we go. But I'll tell you what, there are some Francis bishops who slipped through the cracks, like that guy in uh, uh, what Columbus, the bishop Columbus, in Ohio. Columbus. And he's young. He's he's not even 50. Right. I, and he I says it'll have mass. Like, how did he slip through the cracks? Couldn't you? Don't you didn't do a background that. check on him. Well, they, you know, they're getting down to, um, they're, it's getting harder and harder to find people who will take the job. I mean, there's always going to be someone to take the job, but it's getting harder. A lot of these people are like, nah, nah, I just want to be left alone and, you know, praying off the mass and well, work in my you, parish or my apostolate. And uh, Do you think you know. it's possible that there are less and less uh, priests who are, supportive of LMNOP because I think the ones like my generation, let's say my generation, if they reject the doctrines of the Catholic faith, they just don't go to church. Right. Right. That's Whereas the, if you look at the people, 60s, 70s, if they reject the doctrines of the faith, some of them still go to church. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if you remember the old hippie saying, never trust anyone over 30. That was something they said back in the 60s. Never trust anyone over 30. Well, it still applies. Uh, it's never trust anyone over the age of 70 in the Catholic Church. <laughs> there are exceptions. Archbishop Vigano, big ups. Um, but um, but other than that, yeah, it, it's a good it's a good general rule. <laughs> it's a good general rule. Yeah. So what they're finding is with the newer generation, anyone who's sticking around and actually being Catholic is much less likely to support the silliness. The, I mean, it, it, we could say silliness, but um, it's much more serious than that, unfortunately. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, well, not always. Sometimes it's a clown mass. And oh, sometimes you have the Easter bunny who dresses up and walks around on the altar. Yeah. Did you see that photo? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I want to go Oh, woe to the shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that all true, and all, but only in Lord's time. Um, we have, uh, you know, we've got, you know, the errors of Russia have certainly spread, have they not? Uh, <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, what was that crazy uh, lady, Our Lady of Fatima talking about anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find this photo here. Maybe it was Taylor Marshall, if I just go to Taylor Marshall's Twitter. Because <laughs> I really want to share that, and then that, that'll be a close. Okay. As woe to the shepherds who, who destroy, destroy and... and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Absolutely. Jeremiah is full of good stuff like that. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I really feel the book of Jeremiah um, because... I've because that there were people, li, you know, living in Jerusalem at the time when you know Babylon came and laid siege, who were good people. They were they were followers of the Lord. Um, they didn't necessarily agree with the decision the king had made, 
but they were good people. And yet they suffered extremely because, because they didn't, because they didn't leave. Um, you know, and I think, I think it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that the same thing will happen to us. I mean, you know, we have a crazy old man who seems to, oh, there he is. Yes, yes. Oh, look who it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Aaron Ryan SJ. He is. Hey, this is see? from uh, Armchair Philosopher, who does a lot of church militant parody uh, memes on Twitter. And Aaron Ryan had a very unpleasant experience oh. with, a, with a trad. Oh, no. Do you have to talk to one? Uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, did yes. you? Now, did anyway. uh, Parent Ryan uh, address uh, the comment by uh, America Magazine about uh, dropping the Gospel of John? Parent Ryan was talking about the Jesuits rewriting the Bible yeah. a week before the America Magazine heretics were exactly. talking about dropping he's the a, Gospel he's, of John. He so, the, he's the Parent Ryan, baby. I mean, Parent Ryan leads the news. Absolutely, and and so does John, son of thunder. You know, we have. We have tooted our own horn on many occasions, but um, it isn't news yeah. you can use, but it's good to know what's coming down the pike. And many so times we have told, along with the fake news we've spread, we have spread news before it's happened. So, yeah, sometimes like a year in advance. So check out our old stuff. Maybe it'll be coming around again. Who knows? I mean, this is kind of like old. Yeah, this is old. This is old news. This is so. Oh, Brett, uh, hold on. <laughs> Let me see here. Wait till this loads. All right. Brett, do you have any closing thoughts? Okay. Uh, my closing thought is uh, I pretty much said what I needed to say. Um, uh, the LMNOPs are coming. They're coming for you. They're coming for your church. They're coming for your family. Um, this shouldn't be news to anybody. Um, if it is, um, pay attention. But if it's not news, but uh, take heart. Um, and uh, fight manfully, uh, do what you can. Um, God will sort this out in his own time, which is not necessarily our time. Uh, this may be a chastisement, uh, certainly a chastisement we have coming, and uh, we may be chastised all the way out, who knows? But uh, God will not abandon his people. That's, and that's way too preachy for a sinner like me, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, and for us, I think we need to just discern what's best for our own situations. I mean, if you're, you know, I always say find a good community. Right. You know, because community, you can support each other. And that's very important. And especially if you can find some good people locally, that's going to help you out a lot. Yeah. If you can and only find you can, them online, that's where you find them. You can do a lot together. And, you know, I don't like to imply anything so i'll just come out and say it you can you might be able to organize a house mass with a with a nice group of, a nice community of people you know if, if you say hey father can you come to my house and you're the only one that's going to be different than you say hey father there's 30 people i can i can get 30 people to come to my house want a latin mass can you can you come can you accommodate <laughs> it's a little bit different Absolutely. and that, that's just a thought that's just that's just one suggestion but you know Find your communities, and some of you may already have it. Some of you have good priests, and that's what you need. And Absolutely. a good priest will lead us through it. But it's up to us, too. Well, I mean, it is up to us because the priests are hamstrung by their, by their, by their leaders, by their bishops. Um, and you know the monastics. There are a lot of bad bishops out there, as we know. Yeah. Well, and you know the monastics, they spend most of their life in prayer, and that's what we need. And so... Yes. For us to spend, uh, you know, a majority of our time in prayer, that certainly can't be a bad thing. So um, right. do what we can. I know I, what, what am I saying? You know, look in the mirror. Maybe I should talk to myself a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but still, I mean, you get it. You guys get it. I think we're all pretty much on the same page, the people that watch this video. So well, I hope so. I, I hope that, yeah, I'm, we, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's going to be tough. We have each other. We have our, you know, we have the, our fellow believers. We have, and we have the big guy. And I have, 
10% not, to me right now. Well, and, and just a point I'd like to make here. We have as many people on this live stream right now as Father Jim had on his, and I have some 300,000 fewer followers on Twitter. So what does that say? <laughs> we got some great we got some great viewers that's what it says yeah that. two thousand subscribers great subscribers great viewers thank you everyone um this has been the thunder and lightning show and until next time we are the laity and we will not be silent